Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Anangie. Thank you so much for tuning in. And yeah, today's video is just a bit different. I'm not talking about makeup. I'm not talking about clothes or that jazz. I'm just talking about something that I feel like it's serious. It affects youth. It affects everybody. And I just thought, um, let me talk about it. And before I talked about, like, I came up with this topic, I was really thinking like, I feel like I need to talk about something serious. And then I googled life after uni and I was like, oh. so it's not only me who actually thinks about that. So it's, I feel like this is like a real issue and it affects almost all of us. And yeah, so let's just get right to this. My first topic that I want to talk about firstly is um, reality versus expectation after uni. Um... I finished school last year I finished my degree last year and I must say uh, it's you know getting in that thing of graduating it's it's a very big moment not just for you but for everyone involved your family your friends whoever that has been in the journey with you it's an exciting moment but you the person who's actually graduating it's exciting but at the same time for me personally that's how i experienced it i remember when i graduated for my diploma it wasn't as stressful as was for my degree because for my diploma i was still i knew that i was going to continue doing my my my, my degree which is btech and i was still studying so it wasn't that much of uh too much expectations or thinking about what next i knew that okay i'm going back to school i'm just graduating i'm continuing and in that year i also had internship which i'm going to talk about on my next um point but for now i'm just gonna i'm just talking about this point um so with that diploma there wasn't much reality hitting in and expectations and all of those it was just okay continue to study but I remember when I actually graduated from my BTEC and thinking like like literally on the day when I was graduating I was like everybody else you get happy you get emotional and all of those things and I had all those feelings but at the same time I was like what now you're not gonna stay at res are you gonna go back home what are you gonna do and the truth is it's a very scary place to be and it it, it 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 creeps in slowly and then until you are actually like now starting to have to look for a job which is on my next point is looking for a job like the next step um one thing i've learned is that in south africa there's a lot there's a huge number of graduates that are not employed in my class that uh, I studied environmental health and for everybody who studied health that whole health thing medicine to be um, dentist pharmacist you need an environmental health you need to have completed your community service before you can actually work and getting community service on its own, it's a process where the government selects you. And just the selection of it, it's on its own, it's stressful. In my class, we were, I think, almost 40. Out of the 40, I would say 15 were part-time, so they're still studying now. But out of that 40, I think almost, out of that 30, I think maybe 20-something graduated. And out of that 20-something, I know that only like four or five got internships. And that gives you the rest of the other people who didn't get, I mean, community service, who didn't get community service. I didn't get community service as well. And another problem that the country is facing, we just had a, a, a listeriosis breakout. And only now then you will get to hear this speech about the minister of health about having to hire a lot of environmental health practitioners like do you know the backlog of students that are sitting 
waiting for that not just the group that i was in the group before me and the group before that so in a class of like almost 20 something graduates you only take five where does it leave the other 20 and that's just the reality of it and for me i was fortunate enough that at the time when i was doing my btech my degree i got internship i got internship and i was able to go to work and go to school and I, I i i'm really humble about that and i'm really grateful to 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 god as well that i actually got that opportunity to do that and it's it's not everybody who gets that i still have classmates that haven't they're not still working they're not still working they're still sitting at home waiting for community service and bear in mind community service you only get placed once a year so now we're waiting for the cycle of August. That's when the other few people are going to be placed. Third point. Um, you feel depressed, anxious. For me, what, what, what I was feeling, it's like someone were like, but you got internship. But no, it's the, the fact that when you, you graduate, that moment when you hear your name, you know that now you have to get out of the world. You have to experience things. You have to live your life now. You're responsible. You can't just go to mommy and daddy to do everything for you. And it, it might not apply to everybody. Some people, they still live at home and for different reasons. For me, it was that moment that when I was in varsity, I stayed at res and then when I graduated, I was very anxious about life. Do I still want to go back home? And I don't have a problem with being home. It's just that the, the, the environment of where I come from, it's something that I, I promised myself that I don't want to go back to that, which is, and before someone judges me and thinks that I'm looking down on anything, it's not, it's a decision that I personally made I went to a township high school and I feel like that's where I was meant to go and sometimes things happen the way they should be and I have no regrets of where I come from but at the same time it is not a safe township and my dad also he personally gave me his blessings and saying that if you can not stay in this area I would worry less about you so if you want to move out that's fine and that's another thing you think like Cape Town is like very expensive to rent and I'm only an intern you can't you cannot commit to a lot of things like uh, taking a lease and all of that internships are usually for like six months and that so that's another thing that you you, you think about and for at co when I, where I was working before where I'm working now I knew that my internship was just for that period and I knew that there was no guaranteed um, position. So I left there and I went to go do another internship somewhere else where I was told that there's a chance that um, they might take me permanent. And that's another thing that I just want to talk about. Internships are good, but sometimes they're humbling and they're humbling. And what I'm trying to say is that um, internships are good and they're humbling and you get to learn a lot because one thing also that I realized is that what you learn at uni and what you actually go to actually do at the job it's different it's totally different how I was taught what I do so I do occupational health consulting and what I was taught at uni about occupational health and safety it was just from one perspective of one person's experience and you get into an industry the expectations are different the you realize that oh my gosh i don't know anything i did occupational health for three years out of the four years that i studied for but till today excuse me i feel like there are still things that i don't know and that's where i i, I feel like that's where internship comes from because you you can't in a way expect instant gratification that you like i'm coming from uni give me my money i want to earn 50k 20k or whatever 
No, take the intention. It 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 will it will prep you. But at the same time, I also feel like there's a certain extent that you can do internship for. I know people who've been doing internships for like two years, and you're like, that's another thing that other companies I also feel like they abuse that title of internship. They will keep you on an intern because they don't want to take you permanent because taking you permanent has they have to pay you more and they have to give you the, all the benefits and some companies are not willing to do it that so what they will do they just throw the internship card but at the same time like i said internship has its good the only bad that i feel is that you sometimes will be stuck with other companies that will do that to you and yeah and i'm gonna just go when, when i graduated um i had this thing like I want to take my parents from the like out of the hood i want them to retire my daddy started working when he was like 18 and just seeing him now that sometimes in the morning he'll be so tired he he he, he wants to rest he's 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 not that old but i feel like studying working hard at that age by the time the age he is he is 57 it's tiring and it breaks my heart that i feel like can i lord can i get there already can i just relieve the pressure of my parents that they don't have to work anymore everybody has their own goals that they want to do and coming from um an african family you expected to black tax and what I mean about black tax is uh, black tax we refer it to um, helping out the family like you pay you, you help out the family financially so that's what black tax means and to some other people that come from a well-off family it's not expected from them and I'm not saying it's expected for mine but it's something that you grow up that you you know that you need to do my brother had a duty he didn't have to do that but my brother my brother played a role into uh, me being in uni he didn't finish studying and but he made sure that he would help my dad where it needed to be and I'm talking a lot about my dad I also have a mom and she also played a role as well but they all chipped in when it was needed to. They all ha helped me when it was needed to. And that's also that thing you feel like you also need to give back. You also need to look after the one that comes after you. I see my sister and I'm like, I want her to go to a better school that I, than I did. Like she's also um, in the township school. And I don't have a problem with township school, but I also do because I was... I actually learned how to speak English by my I taught myself being surrounded by people who spoke English a lot helped me to be able to speak English because in the school where I went to you would actually be taught English in Kosa and like and I had a teacher who also taught me how who in grade twelve who taught us Kosa in English which was really funny but anyway i'm digressing so th th that's also one of the aspects that will make you stress will make you anxious and a lot of south african students uh, um south african youth i feel like they would actually like agree with me on this that they also go through that i feel like it's a lot of people that are going through that and that's the reality of it My next point it's this is the point where I'm saying on my perspective things that you need to prepare yourself while you're still in uni to 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 do after uni first of all um, I would like to say that build a relationship with your lectures I feel like it's important to have a relationship with your lectures because bear in mind these people have been in the industry they know the industry they know the people and they will help you I remember when I, I, I personally, I'm not gonna lie, 
I was never a top student, but I feel like my life has been full of grace and there are just some places that I've, I've, I've got to places where I didn't know how I got there and I think the only thing that can explain that it's grace sometimes you see yourself that oh my gosh how did I do this and that's me so when I had to do my BTEC I was short with some points and if on truth to be truth to be told if that lecture that was doing the placement of people who are supposed to be in BTEC was at that time I don't think I wouldn't have gotten it and that's another thing that sometimes I'm saying that God will work on your favor um, I was fortunate I was blessed that the lecturer who was doing selection for people who are supposed to go do their degree on, on, my, on the year that I was doing it it was a different lecture not the lecture that I, we were used to I was scared like this guy you won't convince him otherwise you won't tell him like you oh, so it's just two points or whatever he won't take you but that lecture I remember telling him I was like prof I am short of these marks and he was like ah come on Perry he just saw me and he's like accepted and it's that relationship I'm not saying that he was a corrupt lecture but like I'm saying when 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 the lectures they know the kind of person you are and they see potential in you they will help you and on that I had a lecture that um, she really she is wonderful she is humble and also I had a discussion with her at that time also when I was scared like what am I gonna do when I thought I wouldn't be able to do my BTEC um, she actually took my email and she emailed a few places for me but because God at that time wanted me to complete my degree I, I didn't get any callbacks from those places which everything will work in, in, in your favor and everything will work just fine in God's time I also just want to add that so at that time I didn't get any responses but what the point I'm trying to say is that when you have that relationship with your lectures and you're not rude to them and you respect them trust me when you need to go to them and you need to talk to them they will help you they will go out of their way and help you that's another just point that I just wanted to add on have a relationship with your lectures it doesn't have to be all of them the one that you feel like okay I'm clicking with this lecture talk to them and Another thing is take almost every job while you're also in uni. Not every job is also for the experience of the industry that you want to go to, but I feel like other jobs are going to build your character. I've had jobs that they've taught me humility. They've taught me empathy. You understand people because I was there, because I've been a waiter. I would never speak so bad to a, to, a, to a waiter I would never be so rude to a waiter I didn't understand the purpose of tipping a waiter before I was a waiter my boyfriend at the time he used to give waiters so much tip and I'd be like why so much but until I was a, a waiter I understood that like they work hard I, I, I was working hard I remember while still at varsity in the morning I have to go to class I am working until 11 and you get rude people that are not even going to acknowledge that you're a human being and they say this order and a person comes back and change the order and you have to pay for it so and other jobs they will build your character they will build the, the person that you are you are going to be able to work with people because of certain jobs that you've done in your life so that's another thing that while you need to take those jobs it's not like to say no i'm not going to get an experience i'm not going to like it's not the same for what i'm going for if what you're going for is not available at the moment while you're still in uni take those jobs they will build you trust me it's coming from me and another thing that i just want to touch on is stay away from debts stay away from debts trust me people that know me on a personal level they will say that she is not joking i am not my first debt started with uh, a student credit card i was coming from class the bank approached me and i remember that day i didn't have money 
and they're like if you sign this this money is just going to be an account right away and i did and i got it and i don't remember what i got with that money but i'm still paying for that credit card because the thing with credit card it never ends you pay more they give you your money back so that it doesn't end you keep paying you keep paying then it goes into this thing oh i want to look i want to be in shape i want to look dope you go you get a gym membership and then come winter you don't even go to that gym i went to the gym my first gym that i opened was zone fitness i didn't go there i only went there for three months but the contract was for two years i paid the rest of the months for free i just gave them my money and then you start with the clothing account you start with the clothing account and then the licks goes on and on and on and on you feel like okay i'm gonna pay it and then if you're a person who wants to keep your record um your, your credit record good you're gonna pay it like i'm scared of having a bad credit record i paid but at the same time it's the fact that you end up paying more than you can be able to afford because all these accounts they're gonna keep piling up and by the time you realize half of the money that you go you, you you're getting paid for goes to the accounts and truth is while you're still at uni you might be getting an allowance but when you get out of uni you don't know if you're gonna get a, a job straight away hence is another thing that stay away from those accounts they're not necessary you I think I've said too much, but that's just something that I really felt that I should talk about. And in closing, I just want to say that I hope someone that it, this message gets to someone that has been there and is going through the same. And I believe that I'm not alone in this. I feel like almost every it's 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 a problem. For almost everyone in South Africa and probably across South Africa, it's unemployment rate is just too high. And there are many graduates that I know are working in retail stores because there's no jobs. And we have a system that is just not considerate as well. Like what I said in the field that I... I I wanted to be in before I thought of doing health and safety consulting I really wanted to be a health and safety I really wanted to be a health practitioner because I came from a township where service delivery is, is bad and that's another thing that made me do the course I thought that if I could be placed to work in this area where I come from I know the issues I know the people I know what they need it would be really helpful but over the years knowing how it is hard to get community service to just get to be in the system that love died and i found something else and like i said i'm still an intern and i i, I feel blessed that i have that opportunity where where some don't have and and you in an industry way in south africa health and safety it's very male dominated and i am not making this about race but almost everywhere where i apply they ask you if you are afrikaans speaking and it's just to me i feel like it's also a thing like just be white because that's this is the the thing is the the african speaking people are white and you have this thing that they have these requirements that you see some of these other posts that um they say now this one is funny they say we want someone young fresh uh vibrant or whatever those words maybe with like five or six years experience how's that person fresh how's that person young like honestly it doesn't make sense you're just saying you want an older person that is like has experience and is not fresh because truth is when I was also doing my internship with a previous company I realized that people there work with the mentality of I've been here longer than you have and I know that when you're coming out of fresh from varsity you have this thing like okay I'm gonna show them I know this I got this and that's all good but at the same time 
you're gonna meet people who don't want to listen to you first of all because your color you're a female you're a child they won't listen to you like what do you know but sometimes you realize that actually you get newly new information when you're coming from varsity they are just other information that they're not exposed to that you are exposed to not that you know the job very well that you don't have to listen to them but you can bring something to the table and that's um one of the issues that i also uh, i noticed being in the industry and i'm not gonna keep you long i'm gonna end this discussion here i'm gonna come back with a part two of another issue that i feel like is affecting uh, the youth in south africa but for now let's just end this video right here thank you so much for watching and if you got this far oh man come on please give it a like a comment and please subscribe to my channel and i'll catch you next time bye